So here we are back on the wiring rig. This time we're not doing a Y plan valve. We're going to do the S plan system. And then we'll go through how this one works bit by bit, just like we did before. So we'll start with the heating. We put heating on constant. That then sends power to the 10 way, which sends it up to the room stat. Turn the room stat on. And two port valve moves over. Makes the connection. And it'll fire the boiler and the pump. Right, so we'll focus on the heating side first. We've got our twin channel programmer. Heat inside. Put heat into constant. So this is our permanent live. So that comes from the switch through spare. That's our neutral. That's our earth. This white cable here is the hot heating on from our programmer. So if we turn the programmer off, we get no power. Put it back on, we get power. So we know that's our heating on. That then goes up to the room thermostat. And then it will come back on orange. So we turn the room set up, it makes that, which sends it up the brown to our two port valve, makes the micro switch inside, opens it, and then it sends it back down on orange, which then fires your boiler and your pump. So with the S plan system, it's actually a lot simpler than the Y plan, because you've got less cables, you don't necessarily have to worry about hot water off like you do on the three port. So inside the twin channel programmer, what we've got is our live neutral earth, live neutral earth. And then one would be your hot water off, but that would be for a Y plan system. So nothing's in terminal one. We go along, hot water on is terminal three, but we're focusing on the heating side for now. So terminal four is heating on, which is the white cable which then appears here. So it goes programmer, sends power down the white, comes up to here. Then it goes into the room thermostat. And then when you call in for heat, it comes back. And then it goes up the brown into here to power the micro switch, and then comes back down on the orange. So our orange is our switch live, which fires our boiler and our pump. But with the two ports, something else that's different is the gray permanent live so you've noticed on the 10 way it's wired into permanent live so the s plan whether it be for the heating or the hot water they'll both they'll both have permanent live and then the brown is your call to the two port to open once it's opened and made the micro switch it then allows power down the orange which fires our boiler and our pump so with our room thermostat it's the same so the power comes in on number one. Once it reaches temperature, it goes back on number three, which would then go to your valve. So we've got power coming in, but nothing going out because we're not cooling. As soon as we turn that up, we're sending power now back to the 10 way, which in turn sends it to the valve. So looking at our 10 way with a little bit more detail. So like I said before, if you wire it from scratch, then you can put it in the order that is easiest for you, which is live, neutral, earth. And then number four, I use as heating on because that's normally how it is in wiring diagrams. And then I've got number five as your heating back from the room stat, which then is your call to your two port valve, which then goes back and fires the boiler. I haven't done the hot water zone valve in this as well as the heating purely because you'll just have a lot more cables and I'm trying to make it simpler. So if there was another zone valve here, say this one's heating, that one would be hot water. You, the gray would go into the gray, the neutral would go into the neutral, the earth would go into the earth. So that's three out of the five cables we've just got rid of. And then our brown would go to our hot water on which would be over here. And then the orange would go back into the here to fire the boiler and the pump. 
So it doesn't really matter whether or not it's the heating valve or the hot water valve in regards to three of the cables. The only ones we'd be concerned about is the cool in and the switch live out. So to sum up the heating side of our S plan system, we'll have our power coming into the 10 way from our switch view spur, which powers the programmer. Once you select heating, power goes down on number four, which is our heating on, comes into the 10 way, which then goes to our room thermostat. When you're calling for heat, it goes through the room thermostat, comes back through the two port valve to open. Once it's opened and the micro switch is made, it then allows the boiler to fire. It's important to know in what sequences things work. So you get power to the programmer, power to the room stat, power to the valve, then power to the pump and the boiler. And then equally for hot water, you'll have power from the programmer. It will go to your cylinder stat. So you'll decide whether you need the hot water or not. If you do, it comes back down to fire the valve. The valve opens, makes a micro switch and fires the boiler and the pump. So it's, it's a lot more simple than a Y plan because you've literally got the certain stages that the voltage needs to go through to fire the boiler. So for example, on heating, the heating gets up to temperature. It cuts the power off to the valve, the valve shuts, which then, which then takes the power off the micro switch, which cuts the power to the boiler. And I haven't done pump overrun on this, but on newer boilers, pretty much all boilers now, you would have a pump overrun, but it's not really necessary for me to wire it in on here. So I've just given them permanent life based on the voltage from the two port. Right, so now we'll do the hot water side. So literally all I've done is took the brown cable, which was teed into where the room stack comes back. And I've just clipped it into where the cylinder stack comes back. So it's the same principle. So we'll go to hot water on the programmer, go to constant, power goes up to the cylinder stack, call for heat. It will then send power through here, up the brown, Power it over to make the micro switch, back on orange, boiler and pump fires. And then once we've achieved the temperature that we want, the power stops here, which then doesn't go to this and cuts the boiler and the pump off. So remember it was terminal three for hot water on. It comes up to here, which I've done as one, two, three, four, five. I do it as terminal six. So you send power from the programmer out to the 10 way. We're seeing it's on this one, which is then the blue cable up to here. So we're getting power there our feed in but we're not getting it back because we're not calling for heat yet so that cable is the one that would go to our 10 way and our two port valve we call for heat it then connects it over in there sends it up to here and then we'll wait for the micro switch to be made on orange and away we go and it's literally as simple as that So with the cylinder stat on an S plan, you just have your feed in and then you have your feed out. So calling for temp heat, not calling. It either opens the gate or closes it. So things to remember on the S plan valve, the gray is permanent live. So these will always have power to them. You got your neutral, you got your earth, and then your brown is your call to the micro switch. And then your orange is your switch live back once the switch has been made to fire the boiler and the pump. So a few fault finding tips. If you went to, for example, no heating on an S-Plan system and you went there, 
the first thing you can do is start checking across the 10 way. So if you were to check here for your heating on, if you're getting power on your cable coming from your programmer, then you know the program is okay. So the next thing you can do is check if you've got power at the room stat, if you're getting power to the room stat, but then when you're clicking it over, it's not passing through, then the room stat would be at fault. But if it is going past the room stat and coming back and you've got power on your brown, but then you're checking on your orange and you don't get 240 on your orange, it's a faulty valve because it's not motoring over enough to click the uh, micro switch to send power back to this. So you wouldn't necessarily need to change the whole body. You could get away with just changing the head. You could use the same principle for whether or not you had no hot water. So the first thing you could do is check the cylinder stat. So if you check the feed in, if you're getting power at the feed in, you know that the programmer is okay. If you were to make a demand and you it wasn't sending power out of the cylinder stat, then the cylinder stat would be at fault. But if it does pass through, that cylinder stat is doing its job and it's sending it to the valve. So when you come to fault finding, the reason for the 10 way is you're basically meeting it in the middle. You can then start testing from one component to another to work out whether everything's working up to that point or work backwards. If you didn't get power at the room stat, you'd then start looking backwards. Is the programmer working? Is there power to the programmer? Then you'd look at your switch view spur, your fuse, and you can do it like that. Fault finding is all about a certain procedure and just think of things methodically from start to finish. So that's why it's important to know the sequences of things. I hope this video helped you guys out. Um, if you've got any questions or anything, drop me a comment or a message. And um, I'd appreciate if you like and subscribe as well, please. And then, you know, hopefully I can do some more.